Welcome everybody to Keep Indiana Learning. We're on the fourth night of our college and career readiness uh, series with the one and only Kieran Bush. We're thrilled to have her back at Keep Indiana Learning and these um, series will all be together here on YouTube. Make sure that you share those, um, retweet them, follow us, subscribe. We love to reach out to new people. We would appreciate it if you could share us keep at keepindianalearning.org with your networks as well. Karen, I'm going to turn it over to you to get started and let us know what we can expect from episode four. Thank you so much, Lena. And I want to take a moment just to say, Lena is fabulous. She reached out to me some time ago and said, hey, uh, I need you. We worked together for about nine years um, at Pike and Lena was always my go-to person when I wanted to get something done. I was like, how do I get to a yes? Hmm, let me talk with Lena. And so I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you for your dedication to this and Keep Indiana Learning. And just there's so much. I got caught up one day in Keep Indiana Learning, looking at stuff and on the um, YouTube channel. And I looked up, it was two hours later. There is <laughs> so much rich information that you all are uh, archiving and just your the upcoming uh conference i'm just i just love it and i want to just say thank you so much and um i really appreciate you well we appreciate you it is because of educators practitioners those who serve the students that we care about so deeply in indiana it is because of you and the content that you create that we are as good as we are so thank you right back thank you well today this is session four College Affordability. This is the last session of the four part series, but like Lena said, they are all housed on YouTube so that you go back, listen, pause, write stuff down. This will not be the last time you see me. I will be coming back, uh, probably take the summer off, coming back in the fall to do a lot more um, of these wonderful sessions. Again, my name is Karen Bush. I'm with GBKB Educational Consulting. Um, what I want to do, and Jalen, you probably know this or don't know this, but um, last 15 years, again, I just left College Board. I was the Associate Director of Indiana for the College Board, and that's the PSAT, uh, SAT, and AP. Before that, I was the Director of Post-Secondary and the District Graduation Coach for MSD Pike. And before that, I was the outreach manager at the Commission on Higher Education. And recently, my newest adventure coming up in July, I am now the director of college and career counseling for Hamilton Southeastern School District. I am excited to um, start a new adventure. Um, I've gained a lot of knowledge being out into uh, the college board world, getting a different view of college and career planning. So I'm excited to bring that information back to Hamilton County. And I'm excited to be seven minutes away from my job. So that's gonna be exciting. I keep this up here um, on all my presentations because when we say college, I and you see the word post-secondary, I think post-secondary. Um, a lot of people say college, but anything after high school, secondary education is high school. So anything after that is college, career, your education. Are you going to uh, work? Are you going to get a trade or a skill or two year or four year? What are you trying to do? How, are, how will you do it? What are your needs? How will you succeed? All of that encompasses post-secondary education and counseling because it's, it's a pretty big world out here and just trying to make sure you have all the information I think is very, very important. So today we have a lot to cover. Uh, again, coming from a high level uh, point of view, if, if I broke this down like I really could, we'd be here till 11 o'clock at night. So I'm coming at a high level. If you guys have any questions or comments or um, just thoughts, please make sure you email me or you may text me because my phone number is right in this presentation. So again, we're going to talk about what's the real cost of college. We're going to go through financial aid. We're going to go through step by step. The fast five. And the big mistake, some people say FASA, some people say FASFA, is the FASA. And that big mistake, that's the free application for federal student aid. 
Then we're going to talk about how to get scholarships. That's the number one thing people ask me is how to get scholarships. Where do I get scholarships? Then we're going to look at athletic scholarships briefly, and then we're going to have questions and answers. So what is the real cost of college? This was in my last presentation, this particular side, developing a strong college list. Fall in love with your options. Why do I say that? Because I've had students that will develop a list and they will say, well, these three I like and these three, eh, I'm just applying it, applying to them because or my parents want me to and I really don't like them. So when a kid says, I really don't like them, I say, well, don't apply to them. I don't care who's telling you to apply to them. Don't do it. Because let's say you don't get in the first three and you get into the last three, but you don't like any of the last three. You have no intentions of going and you'll be mad that you didn't get into the first three. So your list should really encompass schools that if you get in one and don't get in the other, you'll still be okay. You'll still be happy with it. I know there's always this number one, I just, I really want this school, but be okay if your first choice you don't get into. College admission, the landscape is changing so rapidly right now, um, just because two, you have to understand college is a business and two years of making up college admissions, kids taking gap years, kids not going to college and now going back, um, college has lost a lot of money. So they, they are being a lot more particular about who they let in. So then we have that whole test optional, test blind, test free, that, that just brings another thing into it. So developing that strong list. So you know, when you've done your research and I'm gonna say research, 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 not just, oh, I wanna go to Ball State and I know it's in Muncie and they're the Cardinals and their colors are red and black, that's great. But what is the real cost of going to that school? Because you have to be able to pay that every single year for four, maybe five, I don't say six, unless you're going to get a master's degree with that. So that best fit has to be looking at academics. Do they have what you want? Do they have your major? Do they have programming that if you want to study abroad, that they have that, that you can maybe make up your own major. They have minors that fit with your major. Social, does the school fit you socially? Um, I, I'm going to take my oldest son. He goes to a school down in Alabama. And I'm just going to compare him and myself. When I look at that, I, I'm like, oh my God, no. It's scary to me because you can't just walk off campus and go to the McDonald's or go to the CVS. You literally have to have a car to go somewhere. And most freshmen and or sophomores don't have a, co a car in college. Um, and then what's around the little town of Tuskegee, there may be five, five restaurants, fast food. Uber, Uber Eats, DoorDash can't come on campus because it's a closed campus because they have a gate around the entire campus. They have security guards and you can't just come on campus. So socially for me, and then it's a small campus. So I think there's about 5,000 kids there. No, no, I would lose my mind. Their high school had about 3,500 kids. So going to a school that small, but for him, it fits him, it fits him socially, it fits him academically, physically. He likes that small school. He likes being out kind of away from urban environments downtown. And financially it also fit because he got three, four, well, he got two scholarships from the school, but then he also got about five other scholarships. So financially, it was also a good fit. So you have to look at all of that. If I put my youngest son at Alabama, I would worry because he's very social and he wants to be able to jump off campus and get him a Starbucks if he needs to. So you have to think about all of those things when you're looking at a school. So now let's get into that real cost, the, the cost of attendance, uh, the COA is what we call it. So it's the cost of attendance. What are we talking about? Tuition. Tuition is the cost of sitting in class 
uh, going to class, professors talking to you, all of that. Then you have what's called room and board. So if you're going to live on campus, that's your dorm and the boarding is your meals. So let's say you went to a school like IUPUI, if you lived here in Indianapolis, IUPUI is downtown. You can, you have a choice there. You can stay at home and just pay tuition, but go back and forth and stay home. And your room and board is at your house where you don't have to pay. Or if you say, well, I wanna stay on campus, I wanna have that college experience, then you're going to pay room and board to live and breathe and have life on campus. So then there's tech fees. A lot of schools are throwing that in there because Wi-Fi. Most campuses are Wi-Fi friendly campuses. They're open. As soon as you step on, there's all kind of Wi-Fi there. And kids nowadays are pulling on that Wi-Fi. They've got their computers, their iPads, their phone, their gaming. They're doing all these things in their dorms. Um, Wi-Fi printing and there, there's just all this stuff. So a lot of schools put that fee into the cost of uh, cost of attending. And then insurance. Now this is kind of a new thing, and especially with COVID coming. Most kids are attached to their parents' insurance. So my son is attached to our insurance because he's uh, under the age of 25, he's in college. But his school made him take out extra insurance Reasons why that sometimes happen is some parents drop their kids when they're 18. And if they go down there and get sick and some kids caught COVID, they had no insurance to get um, medical care. So sometimes the, uh, the college will ask for you to pay a very minimum insurance fee. So now you take all of that, that is the true cost of attendance, okay? Then you'll see these flexible fees is what I call. They'll put in transportation, food, travel, books. Well, you can't tell a person how much transportation is gonna cost them because they may say that, oh, this is gonna cost you this amount of money, but say my mom and dad are coming to get me. So it's really not a big deal. Um, food, I'm already paying for board. So why do I need to pay for food? Because a lot of kids like to eat, eat off campus travel um, is kind of in there with transportation. Now, transportation can also be if you're taking Ubers, if you're taking taxis, buses around school, travel is just going back and forth home. Books. When I went to school, we went into uh, the bookstore or some off-campus bookstore and bought physical books. Nowadays, I don't know too many kids are buying physical books. You could literally rent books on um, Amazon and a lot of kids get them digitally for like eight or nine dollars. So those fees can be very flexible. So we don't put those flexible fees in the cost of attendance, the price that you have to pay up front. Most schools you'll have to pay that cost of attendance before you even step on campus um, and move in. So cost of attendance, let's say it's twenty thousand dollars for the entire year times four, that's $80,000. But let's just start with year one. So let's say it's $20,000. You take minus the free money. So what is free money? And we're gonna get into that next. That's financial aid that's free that you don't have to pay back. That will equal your net price. Now, if you look at that QR code, there's, there's a net price calculator for you so that you can use, or you can just use your trusty dusty old calculator and say 20 minus, I got this, 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 this is what I have to pay. Then you take that cost and divide it by two. So you have fall semester and spring semester. Or if you're on the quarter system, it'll be fall, winter, spring, you divide it by three. That's what you have to pay every year, okay? I love this worksheet. This worksheet is from Invested, um, I-N-V-E-S-T-E-D. They are here in um, Indiana. They are a company that goes around to schools here in Indiana to give free, totally free financial aid information. We used to have financial aid nights at... Um, Pike, many schools do it now. They are the ones that are probably giving it. This is wonderful. So when you're trying to decide what school am I gonna go to, how much is it gonna cost? You have to see it. 
So you look at your tuition, your room and board. Now I would skip book supplies and transportation and miscellaneous personal expenses. I would probably shade that out and say, here's my cost of attendance. Okay, so let's say the first one is IU, the second one is Northwestern, and the third one is University of Cincinnati. So the cost of tuition and fees could be, let's say, 24000 at IU, and Northwestern is 68 at UC is 26 So that's your cost of attendance. Then you start coming down looking at the grants and scholarships. That's that free money. You minus that. That is your net price. That is what you have to pay. Then you see a, a second list of money called work study and loans. We'll talk about that later, but that's your balance. So now you can start to compare. If you have, let's say $10,000 in grants and scholarships and student loans, and the first one was 25 minus 10, you owe $15,000. You got the same thing for Northwestern at 68 minus 10, you're at 58,000 and so on and so on, divided by two. The real question you have to ask yourself is how am I going to pay that cost? I think that's about the third question I ask students is, do you have money saved up? Most say no. Do your parents have money saved up? Most kids don't know if their parents do. And if you're like me and my, I, you know, I do this for a living, but did I have, thousands of dollars saved up for my kids? No, because we're living every day and I got to feed them and clothe them. And so we don't have a safe in this house that I could go in and be like, here's some stacks and stacks and stacks. I don't have that. So we had to uh, budget. And I've always told my kids, you do have, I'll do half. So the way that kids can do their half is by your grades, because the better your grades, the more opportunities you have for scholarships. Okay, so keep that in your back pocket while when we get to that. So that was the deal that I made with my kids. Um, we just don't have that kind of income that I can write a $25,000 check and say, here you go. I don't know most, most of my friends don't, but you may know that. So you may know, you may have that at your house, but most kids don't, or $58,000. So you have to be reasonable and you have to really think, can I really afford this school? It's great that I got into Northwestern, but can I, can I afford it? Can my parents afford it? And some families have kids, you know, two and three and four kids that are coming right after you. So can they afford all of that and maintain life at home, maintain the bills, maintain the cars, maintaining your travel? It's a lot to consider. So keep that in mind when you're looking. All right, so let's, let's dive into financial aid. There's all different types of financial aid. There's grants, there's scholarships, there's loans, and then there's working, okay? So there's different types of grants. So we're gonna start with grants first. And there's the PEL, the SEOG, the um, Supplemental Educational Opportunity Grant. The Franco Bannon is here in the state of Indiana workforce ready and 21st century scholars are Indiana grants. And then there's university grants, grants that are given at the university level. 21st century scholars is probably one of three or four programs like this in the United States where if you sign up in the eighth grade and you meet a certain uh, financial uh, marker, you go through high school, you stay out of trouble, you graduate with a 2.5 GPA or above, the state of Indiana will pay for your tuition, period, at an Indiana college, okay? At a state school, it's pretty much 100% of the tuition, not the room and board, the tuition. But think again, if you're going to a school that's $20,000 and the tuition is 10, 21st century scholars takes off that 10 right away and you haven't done anything else. Okay, you haven't gotten the Pell, you haven't gotten any grants, any scholarships. So that's a great program. So if you uh, know any eighth graders or seventh grade, you sign up in your seventh and eighth grade. The only way you can sign up in 11th or 12th grade is if you have a really um, 
If you can prove with your counselor and social worker at your school that your condition, your situation has changed and not just financially, not that your parents are now um, not working, but let's say you become a ward of the state or you're homeless, um, then that could possibly be something they can, can consider um, but it's a long process to go through. But I encourage anyone that if their condition has changed to that degree to reach out to the 21st Century Scholars Office. Okay, so free money grants are free money. They are federal. They come from the federal government. That is why you fill out the federal application for student aid. There's institutional grants, like we were saying, the University of Cincinnati, Karen Bush grant, okay? And then there's state grants, okay? They are based on financial need as determined by your application or the program that you are pursuing, okay? Uh, I skipped. Work, work study, student employment. Federal work study is come, it comes through the FAFSA also. Um, it provides on campus or off campus uh, jobs that kids can work. The money does not count against you for the FAFSA. So if you can get federal work study, they'll say that you could get $5,000 of federal work study. So what you would do is go into the financial aid office and say, hey, there's this $5,000 here. I want to be able to work um, to get these $5,000. Now, there's two things about working. Well, I'll come back to that. Um, so th then they take that money. Now they're not gonna hand you a check, but that money will come off of your tuition and student loan. Most of the time kids work about 10 hours, 15 hours a week, okay? Working part-time, maybe it's not federal work study. Maybe you didn't apply, uh, you, didn't, you weren't awarded uh, work study, but you say, anyway, I need a job. I wanna work. So, because I want to cover my expenses, uh, get some job experience. My oldest son, we, we, we set him up pretty good. He went down there, he had money, but he spent a lot of it. So this past semester, he actually got a job on campus because I guess he figured we weren't going to send him any more money. And I was like, if you blew that much money in three, four months, you're, you're going to, it's time for you to get a job. Um, but also there's internships and or co-ops. And I didn't put co-ops on there. Um, may or may not be a paid position, but it can help you gain valuable experience. When I went to University of Cincinnati, we had to do co-ops. So we went to school a semester and then we co-op, got a job for employment and you worked in your major at a local company. Now, one of the things I do wanna say about working, especially as a freshman, you have to be able to find a really good balance because you're not at home anymore. You've got to learn time management on your own. You've got to wake yourself up and tell yourself, don't go to that 19th party that I've been to um, in the last month. I've got a test coming up. I've got this. So you've got to find that delicate balance in trying to go work 20 to 30 hours while taking five to six classes, that's a little much. Something is going to be amiss. Something is not gonna get your full attention. Will that be work or will that be school? You are a student first. So I would say if you're going to seek some type of employment to maybe start with 10 hours, that's maybe two hours a day, just enough to kind of see, get your feet wet and see how you do with handling your studies, okay? Because if you get Fs or Ds or flunk out of school, you won't be there to have the job in the first place. So just, just think about that. Scholarships, free money. Again, scholarships are based on just, there's a million factors. I mean, career, voluntary activities that you do, family heritage, academic standings, talents, abilities. Um, a stigmatism, a stigmatism in your eye, if you're over six feet, if you're left-handed, um, if you were homeless, if your father passed away when you were young, if you are Jewish, if you are a good storyteller, if you have a hearing problem. There are so many scholarships. And, and when people tell me, I can't find a scholarship, then I always say, well, you're not looking. 
because everyone has a story in a sense. And if, and sometimes it, it kind of coincides with an event in their life. Um, I will tell you, so my brother, two years passed away unexpectedly, just out the blue. And he was a member of a fraternity, Omega Psi Phi. And he loved his fraternity so much, um, worked for it day and night, night and day. It was something that he wanted from childhood. When he passed away, well, let me go back. When my, my uh, brother was in high school, my brother barely got out of high school. He was like that 2.0 kid. And that he fought for every C, D that he got because he just hated school. He just he was like, why do I have to be here? But he learned later on in life, well, no, you've got to get your education. So he went on and got his bachelor's degree and was actually working on his master's degree. So in his death, a lot of people donated money to him um, just because of who he was. And they did it for us as a family. But what I did is I started a scholarship fund. Now, my scholarship fund is for young African-American males, but I'm not looking for the 3.5 kid. I'm not looking for the kid that was in every activity. I'm looking for the everyday average kid for him to tell me his story. And next year will be my first year um, giving away a scholarship. And those will be the requirements. So I tell you to just look everywhere, just look anywhere. Google is probably one of your best friends. Um, looking for scholarships is hard. Looking for scholarships is, is, is a time commitment. Parents, if there's any parents on this call, I will tell you to, this is the time to partner with your child especially as a senior, because they're still in high school. They're still trying to study, do finals, play a sport, hang with their friends, apply to college, which, and again, is stressful in itself. Help them apply, help them come up with a system, help them come up with some type of schedule. I put a schedule together and said, okay, Jay, we're gonna apply for these scholarships every week. And we literally did them together. So that A, I made sure he applied for them. And two, so that I can teach him just how to do this. Uh, because even now as a freshman, sophomore, he's still looking for money for college um, because the grind doesn't stop and we always need money. So the keys to success is, okay, just get started. It's never too early to start looking. So if you're a junior now and about to be a senior, you should this summer, you should be looking. If you find yourself sitting around on this phone on TikTok for, I don't know, four or five hours, because I get caught up too. There's a lady on TikTok called at Philly Counselor, at Philly, like Philadelphia, P-H-I-L-L-Y Counselor. All she does, she's a um, college and career counselor in Philadelphia. All she does, her TikToks are nothing but scholarships that she does every day or every other day she puts out scholarships and she puts out at least, I don't know, five scholarships a week. Look her up, follow her, do what she tells you to do. Um, but she, she did a TikTok recently saying she had so much frustration because her kids were still saying, I still can't find scholarships. She's like, you're not looking at my TikTok. So get started, plan, set, a set aside time weekly to just get on, if it's a Saturday from 10 to 12, and just say, I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna look for scholarships. So I today I'm gonna look for scholarships because I wanna go into communication. So I'm gonna look for communication scholarships. I'm going to look on my university that I'm applying to and see what kind of freshman scholarships they have. Then I'm going to go into the School of Arts and Science and see what they have. Um, again, they're everywhere. And then also work on your essay, work on your essay now. A lot of kids say, I don't wanna write an essay. I don't get that because they're trying to give you money. And if I said, well, stand here and talk to me for 10 minutes and tell me why you need the money, you wouldn't do that. So if these scholarships are in California or Texas or China, they have to get to know you some way. But what I found here recently is that 
And I think because of COVID, a lot of scholarships are saying, send me a two minute video or send me a one minute video uh, and answer this question or tell me about yourself. Um, I find that now that's new. That's a very new trend. And I love it because I'm a tech person and it gets kids out of writing an essay and back onto, you know, using the phone and just talking to it. So put your best foot forward. Find all kinds of scholarships. There's a Taco Bell scholarship. When I was at Pike, we did, um, it was scotch tape, um, the thick scotch tape. It, it was a fashion one. So one of my students made a, a coat out of scotch tape. I was his model, but he won a scholarship, he won a $5,000 scholarship making a coat out of scotch tape, okay? Ask around, ask your school counselor, bug your school counselor, your local community foundation, um, your parents' place of employment, your place of employment. Look ahead, review scholarship eligibility criteria and the deadlines. Know what you're getting into. Know that if they say you need a three five and you have a two five, hmm. Now, let me go to that because I'm just going to break what I just said. Now, if you look at a scholarship and there's five criteria and you meet four out of the five, apply for it. I had a scholarship where this kid met all the criteria, except he was not an African-American male going to an HBCU. He was a Hispanic male going to a predominantly white university here in Indiana. He got the scholarship. Why? Because nobody applied for it. Um, I had some kids say, well, this is the, um, it was a, um, not Martin Luther King. Um, I should know this. It, it was a, a scholarship um, that made the kids think that they had to be African-American to apply. And I'm like, but nowhere in here does it say you have to, um, be African-American or going to a HBCU. It's just the group that's putting it on. And they just wanted to know your idea of equity. So read through the scholarships, look through the scholarships, find out what is the real criteria. And last but not least, patience, patience, my dear patience. For every yes, you may get 10 no's. You may get 20 no's, but you, you will get some yeses. Because the more you get into it, you, the more you see that they're out there, you've got your essay done. So you're going to end up applying more because you'll, you'll know what to do. Your essay is right there. You've got a couple other essays. It'll take you 10 minutes to apply for a scholarship versus an hour. So just patience. If you need money, continue to look. Continue to look as many places and spaces as you can. Okay. Okay. So local, start local, start, start here. Why local? Because the competition is, it's not as fierce um, because you're going, your competition is your other seniors in your high school and then your local community foundation and then maybe your parents' job. So start local, see what's here in your community. Then go up to your university and college. Check, call the financial aid office and say, listen, I, you gave me this, but is there any other place I should look? Um, is there something I, I didn't see? Hey, my GPA went up. I was a 3.4, now I'm a 3.6. Is there anything else that you all could give me? Also, again, I said, look at the university, but then look at the college and or major office that you are going to uh, be going to school. So if it's the uh, College of Arts and Science or the College of Engineering, go to that website within the university website and see, are there scholarships there? Because sometimes they're hitting there. Then you go national. National is, again, you're competing with everybody, but you would be surprised how many kids just don't apply because you all give up on yourselves. Don't give up on yourself. Um, you all leave millions and millions of dollars on the table because you just won't apply because it's too much. Some goods, um, Sites to look for, scholarship.com, these are all .coms, FastWeb, CapEx, Chegg, College Board, QuestBridge. College Board, and I used to work there, but College Board has a great 
scholarship. It's not based on an essay. It's not based on a um, GPA. It's not, it's not based on anything. You know what it is? Is if you file the FAFSA, we'll put you in the pool for $500 scholarship. If I have someone waiting, hold on. If you um, take the ACT or SAT, we'll put you in the pool for a scholarship. It's trying to get kids to do the steps because you have to do the steps right. You can't really skip a step. So what we decided to do is award students for the steps. Then if you do all the six steps, we put you in the pool for a $40,000 scholarship. Uh-huh, $40,000. We had a winner. Uh, she went to Kankakee High School last year. She won here in Indiana. And she said she found about it on the whim. So I will tell you kids, if you're not on Twitter, get on Twitter and follow scholarships.com, FastWeb, CapEx. You will get, sign up for their, um, on their mailing list. Now, let me say this. You're gonna say, they send me too much mail. No, they won't. They will send you what you need. You have to do your due diligence and apply. But if you don't want them to come to your email, make sure you go onto Twitter and follow them. There's so much information there, okay? Not all scholarships go to students with the highest GPA. Um, some are based on financial need. Again, academic, athletic, artistic. There's need-based and there's merit-based, okay? Again, I talked about sweepstakes entry, volunteering in your community, your church. Just be advised. Look everywhere, okay? If you're going to go study... Um, My life. If I could have you guys mute your, um, uh, your computer or your phone, I'd appreciate it. So look everywhere. If you're going to study uh, math or calculus, go on Google and say scholarships for math majors. It'll all come up. Now, be advised and be aware. If any scholarship is asking you for one penny, and I mean one penny, don't do it. You shouldn't give money to get money, okay? Hear me when I say, if they're saying it's just a dollar, it's a scam. Think of it. If I can get everybody to send me a dollar for the Karen Bush scholarship and I get a thousand people to do it, I can guarantee you somebody's going to get a $500 scholarship. So don't do it. Again, you can't win if you don't play. If you apply to 10 scholarships and give up, then you don't need money, okay? You must have a plan. Don't get frustrated. Please don't get frustrated. That's why I tell you, go to your parents and say, listen, I need some help with these scholarships. Can you help me come up with a plan, come up with a calendar, help me look? I still look for scholarships for my son who's in college now. Also, don't just look at the 20,000 and 40,000. Look for the little ones. Look for the $500 ones because a lot of kids think, and eh, that's not a lot of money. But if I said, I'm going to give you $500, would you take it? Or would you say, no, nah, that's too small? I think you'd take it. Or if you found $500 on the street, I don't think you'd walk past it and be like, eh, no, I'm looking for something bigger. If you got five $500 scholarships, or five $1,000 scholarships, that's $5,000, that's $2,500. That takes a sizable chunk off of what you have to pay, okay? Um, again, have your essays written. Go ahead and get your resume together. It should be one page resume. If you're a kid, you should not have a two page resume. Um, your GPA, some classes that you've taken, clubs, if you've done any work outside of the, you know, at Burger King or wherever, and any volunteer work you've done, that's your high school resume. Have a copy of your transcript. Um, everybody's just finished school. So contact your counselor and ask your high school counselor, can you email me a copy of my transcript? 
they will be happy to do so. If you saw my uh, presentation a couple months or a month ago, we talked about weighted versus unweighted grade. You need to know what both, what both of those are. Some schools are gonna look at your weighted grade. Some schools are looking at your unweighted grade. So you need to know what's on your transcript. And if you have test scores, they need to either be on your transcript or you need to have a copy of those. Put them away in a folder somewhere on your computer so that when you're applying and if they're asking for it, it's just attach, attach, attach. Apply to at least five to 10 a week. Five to 10 a week. Yes. Uh, many are asking, again, 30 second videos. Be prepared, just go ahead. And again, I'm gonna say it again. And I said it earlier, don't get frustrated. Don't get frustrated. Okay, it's, it's like a little part-time job, but once you do it a couple times, it's not as frustrating as you think, okay? <sighs> All right, educational loans. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you a story in just a second. These are all kinds of educational loans, grad, Perkins, federal students, subsidized, unsubsidized. Um, the parent plus the, down there in purple. I never, even if you're, if you're a client of mine, if you uh, walk into my office, I would never encourage a parent to do a parent plus loan. I would encourage them to look someplace else for money. And I'll, I'll say, I'll tell you why in a little bit. So there's federal, and then there's private, okay? So federal loans, you, the payment is not due until you either graduate or leave school um, or go below half time. So if you go and take six hours or five hours, your loans are gonna come due. Most of the time you get some type of grace period, which is generally about six months, okay? You don't need a credit check to qualify for a federal student loan except for that Parent PLUS loan. They are going to run a credit check on you. The interest rate of a federal loan is fixed and it's often lower than a private loan. I think right now, well, they just raised the interest rate. I think the rate I remember last was a 6.8% interest rate. Um, and then again, you may be eligible to have some of your loans forgiven if you work in public service, but that's another conversation for another day. Private loans, you'll, you'll start seeing a, from Discover, they have a lot of private loans and they'll start, once they know your kid is in college, they will start sending them to you. They require payment while you're in school. Um, some will allow you to defer, but most want that payment. Once you sign it, it's just like a credit card. If you use it, then the next month you pay for it. So if you get a $10,000 loan, they're gonna ask that money to be repaid right then. Um, they do require a credit check or even a co-signer. Now, here's that variable or fixed rate interest. Most are variable. Some I have seen to me are kind of predatory. They are uh, somewhere up to 20% interest. So the day you sign it, 20% interest accrues on your daily balance. Um, most don't offer loan forgiveness. That's kind of a federal thing. So know that there's a difference between the two. I would just encourage you that if you're going to get a student loan and I say student loan and it'll be subsidized or unsubsidized, I think the maximum right now is 5,600. Do that. You don't have to take the whole 5,600. You could take a thousand. If that's all you need, take it. It's okay. Again. Know who the borrower is for each loan. Is it for the student? Is it for the parent? Do I need a co-signer? Know your costs. Remember the worksheet I gave you earlier. If you, if you know your costs and you're saying, okay, I still owe $7,000 to the school and they're giving me five and my parents can come up with two. And if you need to take the five, take the five. But if, you're, if, if you only need three, then take the three. Again, know when the interest begins to accrue. Does the loan debt begin immediately? That is very important. You don't want to loan over your head while you're in school. Okay? And know who you're borrowing, who you're borrowing from. Now, I'm going to tell you a quick story. 
when I was in college, some million years ago, now when you get a loan, you have to go, you, you go through a lot. You go through this interview, an exit interview, you sign, you have to watch a lot of videos because they want you to understand that these loans are yours to repay. These loans, you agreed to them and you knew what you were doing because back in the 80s and 90s, they didn't do all of that. You stood there and they're like, well, do you want a loan? You're like, yeah. And so you're like, sign here. So you sign and I signed. I kept signing and I kept signing because I grew up with not a lot of money. So when someone said, hey, do you want $4,000? I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? By the time I graduated from college, I had over $20,000 in loans. Now, did it help me pay for school? Yes, but did I take the money and do other stuff with it? Yes. When I got out of college, my job, I was making 24,000 and I had 22,000 in loans. Huh. So they didn't get paid. And then I went to graduate school and then I went to graduate school again. And so there's part of my loans I'm still paying back at this age. I'm paying my graduate school loans off, but still the fact that I didn't know any better and no one taught me and I accrued debt that I really probably didn't need if I had to just sat and search for some scholarships. So again, I, I give you... Uh, my pastor already said, um, confession is good for the soul, but bad for the reputation. But I want you to know that loans are okay, and it is considered good debt on your credit, but please make it the last resort. Make it the last resort. If it's May, June, and you're like, okay, I, we've, we've searched the world over, and we've got to pay this bill in July, and they're still offering us this loan, go ahead, but borrow only what you need, okay? and have a plan to pay it back. All right, let's see here, we're at 650, FAFSA, and the one mistake that people make to the FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid. That first word, free, 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 free. You will go on the FAFSA on FAFSA.gov, G-O-V, think of government. The government has the federal money, so it's gov. If you are on FAFSA.com, they are going to charge you the low, low LICO price of $79.99 to help you fill out the free application for federal student aid. So make sure you know where you are. You are on, look, look at that. Make sure you see the FAFSA with the trees, um, with the roots, um, FAFSA.gov. Again, filling it out for federal, state, institutional, financial aid, scholarships are attached to the FAFSA, especially from the um, college. Some colleges have an earlier deadline to be eligible for the aid. So make sure you know all the deadline. The FAFSA used to open up January 1st. Now they have opened, it opens up October 1st. I hate that because it's in the middle of kids applying for college, but I tell kids apply to college August and September, and then October apply for the free application for federal student aid. By October 31st, your FAFSA should be completed. It now takes you maybe 15, 20 minutes to fill it out. As long as you have your, um, driver's license, a social security card, your parents' information. Generally, my son fills it out, calls me in at the end. I fill out my part and we go on about the day. You can, you can pull the tax information over from um, the IRS. So you sometimes don't even need your IRS filings and taxes right there with you. Literally takes 15 minutes to do. Just please, make sure you do it. A lot of times people will say, well, I'm not gonna get any grants because we make too much money. And that could be true. But if you want a student loan, it is attached to the FAFSA. Some, again, some schools attach scholarships because they're looking at the FAFSA to make sure you filled it out. Because if some of their money is attached in a federal way, they wanna make sure all their T's are crossed and the I's are dotted, okay? It is, one of the most important steps in this financial aid process, okay? So please do it. Again, I said it's 125% free. Now, what's the big mistake? What is the big mistake? Does anybody know what the big mistake is? 
No. The big mistake is not filing it. That's 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 really the big mistake. A lot of times people just have a thought about what the FAFSA is, and it really is not that. The second mistake is not filing it on time, missing the deadlines. In high school, a lot of times, kids, I'm talking to you now, if something is due on the first, most of the time you'll get it in on the first, but sometimes you get it in on the second and third because your teacher may take it. They may give you partial credit. They may give you full credit, but you miss the deadline. When it comes to this, when it comes to college and career planning, you cannot miss the deadline. If the application is due October 1st, November 1st, if your uh, college application is due November 1st and they say they want these five things, you need to have those five things in before November 1st. I always tell kids, do not wait till the last minute. We are working on computers nowadays. So if every kid, if 5,000 kids wait till 1158, on October 31st to file an application, some of those applications are not gonna get through that portal. And then your application may get through at 12.02, but you won't know that. You'll just like, I hit it at 11.58, but you don't have any timestamp. So now your application is considered late. In this process, do things early, get them done as early as possible. The deadline is to me 30 days after it opens. So if it opens October 1st, as you see, October 1st, 2022, fill it out. The deadline for the state is October is April 15th. Check with your school to see when they want it in. It may be earlier than April 15th. They may say January 1st, we want all of them in. So you've got to know your plan. Let's talk real quick about athletic scholarships. Just the ins and outs. And this is this is kind of high level. First of all, you need to decide if you're going to play at a college level. High school sports is, is taxing on children. They are at school from seven o'clock to three o'clock, and then they have practice from three to six, and then they come home and eat and shower and then try to do homework. Okay. They may travel on Friday night or maybe Saturday, but that's about it. When you decide to play college ball, you're committing to travel, you're committing to time away from your studies, and it can create problems if you don't have a time management system, if you're not dedicated to your studies. I will take my son who's a baseball player. There were times when he would leave on a Tuesday and not come back till a Sunday. So he's gone all week and he's a biology major and he had chem lab, bio lab, and his professors still expect him to get it done. He literally had to have waivers just to turn stuff in late because in college, most professors don't accept late work. I know when I taught at IUPUI, I did not accept late work at all. All programs are not the same. D1 football at Ball State is not D1 football at Ohio State. It's two different levels, okay? But I tell anyone, if you go to college and play any type of sport, only 2% of high school athletes go on to play college sports. You are blessed and highly favored. Now D1 and D2 and NAIA, they give athletic scholarships. D3 does not give athletic scholarships, but what they do, they package their money differently. Um, they may call it the Karen Bush, you know, good award scholarship, but it's to help pay for your athletics. They also look at scholarships. Nowadays, unless you're going and you're some just like five-star athlete, even football, even basketball, some of the scholarships are not full ride. And then you have to understand what does full ride mean? Some schools say full ride, we're gonna pay for the kit and caboodle, the cost of attendance. We're gonna pay for tuition, room and board. Others say the cost of uh, the full ride is going to be tuition. So that means you still have to come up with this other part. What do your grades look like? 
That's where they pull the other money. What is expected of you throughout the year? So again, going back to my son, he plays baseball. Baseball is January through May, but he got to school in August. I think by the third week of August, he went straight to football practice. I mean, to baseball practice. Football players generally come to school in July. So you got to report early. So you may not have an opportunity to work in the summer. So you're there and you're from July to December. So you have to understand that. These contracts that we sign, these, um, your um, contract to go to college, your, uh, your scholarship, it is reviewed every year and is renewable every year. I think a lot of times kids think, oh, um, the NIL is just, it's something that I, I got, I got it for four years. I'm um, not the NIL, that's the um, in likeness, but your scholarship. If you don't do the things that they want you to do, if they don't think you're performing the way they want you to, they can take away your scholarship, okay? If you want a scholarship, don't, please don't just rely on your coach to try to get your scholarship. They are high school coaches. Their main job is to win high school games and to go to state competitions. Their main job is to not to get you a scholarship. They can help, but it's up to you and your family to get yourself a scholarship. Reach out to college coaches on Twitter, email, text them. Have a social media presence, but watch your social media. I will tell you more than anything, coaches are looking at your social media because your social media, your social footprint says a lot about you, okay? So watch what you're putting out there. Also, I've been told recently, if kids have their accounts locked up and no one can see them, it gives coaches a feeling of why. Why, why is it locked up? Why can't I see it? What are you putting on there that um, I can't see? I, I, you're probably not gonna like this, but here's the thing. And I don't even have a cup in here. The red solo cup, the cups that we use to drink pop, Kool-Aid and every other beverage, especially in college in. Let's say you've got pop, you've got Pepsi in yours, nothing else, but you're at a party and people are dancing and smoking and drinking and hanging out and you're there and someone, because again, you all love a good camera, a good shot, and someone takes a picture of that and you're like, huh, you are innocent in your cup, but the picture doesn't look innocent and that's out on social media. You didn't put it out there, but someone else put it out there. Watch your social media footprint because then people may say, hmm, is he a drinker? Is he a smoker? Watch what's going on on your account, okay? I can't stress that enough. I, when I worked at Pike, I had coaches call me and say, hey, I'm seeing something on this kid's social media. Can you tell me about them? Because right now I'm saying no. So I literally had to explain some things away. I'm like, no, 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 this kid is a great kid. This kid is not that kid that you see. So again, do the work, um, really do your research and what you wanna play. Again, D1 is not always the way. You can play in D2, D3, and AI. You can play. The goal I think really is to get your college paid for. I know a lot of kids like, I wanna to go to the NFL, the NBA, that's great, but you're still a student, athlete. Student first, athlete second. Okay. 7.02, I think I got it all done. I've said this several million times and I'll keep saying it. A goal without a plan is just a wish. So if you have a goal to go to college, if you have a goal to get good grades, we're talking about the academic planning that I talked about in my first session, but you don't have a plan on studying and, um, the classes that you're taking. If you're not strategic in taking certain AP classes and honors classes, um, looking at college majors, what do you wanna study? Where do you wanna go? How do I get there? This is a process that I have seen make grown men cry. You have to be strategic and you have to have a plan. The plan is really action steps. So you have the goal. And then the plan are the steps that you're going to take to reach the goal. 
sit down, just write it out. Okay, so the month of June, I'm going to look for colleges. I don't know where I'm going to look for colleges, but we have a tool at, at our school called Naviance. I've heard about it. I'm going to look at it. Or there's some stuff on Google I can actually look at and start there. But start somewhere. If you need help, if you need just some guidance, um, please call me. You don't have to hire me. You could just call me and say, hey, can you just get me started? Just give me the direction of where I'm supposed to go. I have a list. I have a scholarship list. I can just send it over to you that you can. It's maybe a year old, but if you want it. Now, I think there's about 100 scholarships in there. And it's a little like, whoa, she sent me a lot. But it will keep you busy until you get through that list. But I'm here to help you figure out your plan because I want you to be successful. And I want you to have options. I don't want you to feel like, well, I can only go here. I can only go here because there are so many schools. I know a lot of kids hear about Purdue engineering. Do you know right in Ohio, there's great engineering schools. There's great engineering schools in Kentucky and Florida and California, everywhere. They're not just here. You don't have to go to a four-year school. You can start at Ivy Tech because you may not know or you don't want to go off to college yet or you can't afford it. Community colleges are a great way to start. Great way. I think Indiana is a little different because we really only have one community college. Other states have so many community colleges. At other colleges, at four-year colleges, they have a two-year system within their college. So like at University of Cincinnati, we had university college. So if you didn't want to be in a four-year college and you just weren't ready for it, you could literally start at the two-year college. So well, if you're like, I, I just, I wanna go be a beautician. I wanna do HVAC. I wanna learn how to be a plumber. I know that's not romantic, but I'm gonna tell you, when I had to hire the plumber to come in this house to look at that one bathroom downstairs, for him to walk through my door, I had to give him $500 just to say hello. Then the parts and labor for him to come back. Ah, it's a great job. A sheet metal worker at the airport, putting sheet metal on an airplane. Great job. I want you all to dream. I want you all to dream unconventionally. I want you to dream out loud. I want you to let no one tell you that you can't be what you want to be because they're not going to make money. If someone had told me I could make money talking, I probably would have started this career a long time ago. I would have been a newscaster. Who knows? But I wasn't given that opportunity. I was told doctor, lawyer, or teacher. Now, the teacher thing is funny because I do teach. Hmm. But that's between me and my mom. She said that. And I was like, no, because I thought about the money. But now I am so steeped in education. <sighs> have your dreams, have your goals. Let's find a plan so that you can reach your goal, okay? Knowledge is power. The more you know, the more you have up here, the better you are at making your decisions, okay? So please, we've done this four times. They're all going to be housed on YouTube. What I encourage you all to do is to, after today, maybe take a break. And maybe Saturday, pull up the first video. It's on Keep Indiana Learning's YouTube channel. They're all right there. Share them out with people, please, so that people can see them. Write your notes. And if you're like, okay, I didn't understand that, text me, call me, send me an email. Uh, right there. Karen at gbkbconsulting.com. This is my personal phone number. This is this right here. Text me, say, hey, I was on your um, video presentation and I have a question that I need answered. I watched your video five times and I still don't get it. And that's okay. I would rather you ask me something 10 times than to not know it, okay? So, before I take any questions and or comments, I want to say thank you so much for just jumping on after work while you're probably trying to make dinner or watch TV or just relax. But I want to say thank you for giving me this opportunity to come into your home and to take an hour, hour and a half of your time to just try to give you some information. 
in the fall, what I'm probably going to do is try to go a little deeper for you and just like take some of these concepts and like really drill them down. How do you apply to an Ivy League school? What's this thing about HBCUs? What is it really? Um, what does or what schools are really test optional and how do you apply to IU versus Ball State? Do I need an essay? Not at a lot of schools anymore. So I want to kind of dive deeper into this so that you can really get this good information. So again, thank you so much for coming. And please, you don't have to put it in the chat, but if you have a question or a comment, please come off mute and go ahead and ask your questions. Um, I don't have any questions, but I just want to thank you guys for all the information. Um, it really helped me. Honestly, I had like no idea, but yes, I just wanted to say thank you for just kind of hosting this and especially being free. Like it really helps. So you know, I'm so glad you said that because I, that's one thing I want to make sure that it's free to people. It's open to people. Um, you know, my services are a little deeper in that, that I do have paying clients, but I have so many clients that are not paying, um, that need the help, that I'm just free to talk to you while I'm in the grocery store for the next hour. So, and Jalen, since we're cousins, you need to call me anyway so that we can figure out what we're going <laughs> to do, okay? okay. Um, take my number down, 317-409-9115. Call me, text me so that we can get a plan together. And okay. anyone else that's on the phone, please do so. So I don't know if we have any other questions, but again, I want to thank Keep Indiana Learning and my good friend Lena for everything. Oh, Karen, thank you so much. It's always such a pleasure to listen to you. And um, as the mother of a son in middle school, I am listening with all my ears to these yeah. tips because it won't be very long at all where he will be hitting that high school time and we'll be thinking about that. So I appreciate all the information, both personally and professionally. And um, it looks like maybe we do have a yes, hand raised. have a hand up. Okay. Huh. You can come off mute. I just want to say thank you to um, the information has been helpful and eye opening for a parent like me having the first child going to seniors. Ah. He's going to be a senior next next, next school year. year so, okay. Um, but Shirley, we're going to contact you for more information and questions at times. Thank you very much. This oh, you are so welcome. I look forward for you to calling me and texting me or emailing oh. me. I am so uh, grateful for you guys, and I look forward to your call. Thank you so much. Thank you, Karen. Thank you for being such a resource to the families of Indiana. Thank you for being such a friend to keep Indiana learning. We look forward to so much more with you next year, doing a deeper dive, really looking at the details of this and working through this. And again, please visit us at keepindianalearning.org. Uh, search for us on social media. We have channels everywhere you are from TikTok to YouTube, Twitter, yes. Facebook. We want to be there to help you out. So thank you. Big thank you to everyone for joining us tonight. And thank you, friend, for being thank here. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a great night.